Okay, traders, welcome to today's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Um, before we get started, I just want to run a quick uh, test on the audio. And, uh, and if you can see my screen and you can hear me loud and clear, if you could type a Y in the chat box, that, uh, that would be helpful. Okay, so let's get going here. Before we start today's chart review, and I've got about 20 plus charts to, uh, to run through today. Um, most importantly, uh, with respect to today's presentation, the views expressed here are solely mine. Um, they are not representative or indicative of views held by Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. So now we've got the disclaimer out of the way uh, before I jump into the charts. For those who are here for the first time, and I can see a bunch of you who are, uh, just a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years of learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or probably more appropriately day gambling uh, the S&P. And after some beginners look, I racked up some solid, uh, some solid gains. And uh, however, as is often the case, um, that beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into what were going to prove to be some significant losing uh, positions. I basically gave back all the gains I've made and ultimately took a, a six figure hit on my personal capital. Say so this was a gut wrenching and, uh, and sobering experience is an understatement uh, to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor who demonstrated, uh, a, who demonstrated excellence in trading and had a, an excellent trading um, track record. I worked with my mentor for about 18 months to, uh, to two years. And it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a trading strategy that suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested the strategy and developed uh, a rigorous risk management approach to underpin the strategy. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably uh, the most important watershed moment for me was making the shift from being a highly goal-orientated uh, individual focused on financial gains to really becoming a purely process-orientated individual. And so what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of, of losing trades. But once you make that shift and you become a process orientated professional trader and have that professional trading mindset, you really then understand the true nature of trading uh, in being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities. And what that helps with is you lose the emotional attachment and investment and that hellish emo emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered annual positive returns since I went back into the markets in 2008. Um, since 2013, um, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. The data you can see, the trading data on your screen at the moment, uh, is the data of that managed account service. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices, uh, to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my uh, fund management and, uh, and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert 
for Tickmill, um, providing uh, daily market analysis, a daily outlook for the markets, and a chart of the day, basically a setup or a technical pattern that I'm tracking in the markets, uh, looking, for, uh, looking for a trading opportunity. Um, my other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We don't just offer trading education and development, we also provide funding to retail trading talents. At FX Career Swap, it's not just about developing uh, re trading market and trading strategy knowledge, it's also working on mindset developments. And through our structured program, like I say, you can actually ultimately end up managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those who are interested in learning more about FX Career Swap, I suggest that you either give the team in London a call there, you've got the number, or drop them an email and, uh, and one of the guys on the desk in London will come back to you uh, pretty quickly and you can, uh, you can learn more about what it is we're, we're doing at FX Career Swap. Like I say, that's, uh, that's a brief introduction to, to who I am and, and where I'm coming from. Uh, now I want to, to jump into the charts, we've got about 20 plus to, uh, to take a walk through at the moment. Um, if you do have any questions and or if you, you've got a question about any any of the patterns or, or the, the structure I'm identifying in, in the charts or you want me to look at an additional chart that I'm not going to cover today, I will open the session up for a, for a brief Q&A at the end. So um, if you can just hold off on the questions until the end and like I say, we'll, uh, we'll run a brief Q&A. So I'm going to start with the dollar index. All the charts I'm looking at today are on an intraday time frame and I, I refer to that as a four hour uh, for our chart. And what we're going to look at is the current structure within these charts and see if we can identify some areas that we could potentially trade from or look to to get involved in the market. So starting with the dollar index, um, we're in a five wave decline at the moment. We appear to have completed a wave three um, low here at this 89.17 and we're in a corrective pattern that's that's developing at the moment. Now we had a high put in earlier this week at the 9070 level, and we got the initial pullback into the lows at 8992. Uh, and what I'm looking for is a, basically a three wave corrective pattern to develop in the dollar index. So ideally what I'd like to see is price make a three way corrective move in to test this, uh, the, the demand basically below the 90 level. So if this pattern plays out, what I'd be looking for is bullish reversal patterns, on the four hour chart, four hour time frame, set long positions. And then what I'm ultimately looking for is an equality objective to develop. So equal legs versus the initial move off the lows from this, from below the 89 area, taking us up into what I think will be a wave four high in around 91.25. Um, for those who are interested in Elliott Wave, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the weeds here about Elliott Wave today. And on the remainder of the charts, um, I'm simply looking at the patterns. But I think in terms of the dollar index, obviously it's a defining chart, um, in, certainly within the foreign exchange market as it drives the majority of foreign exchange trade. It's worth understanding where we are in terms of the structure and getting a little bit more detailed because that obviously feeds in then to your views in terms of uh, the other FX majors and pairs, et cetera. So uh, looking for ultimately in, in this, move looking for a test of 91.25. Um, we've also got, if we look at the wave one structure, sorry, wave two structure, we can see that um, an equality objective there will put us up into that 90.99 area. So I'm looking for a test of 90 to 90, uh, sorry, 91 to uh, 91.25, watching for bearish reverse patterns in this area to ultimately set short positions, looking for a wave five to complete uh, below the, the current lows, potentially down to the 88, 87, 50 area. I discussed last week on the weekly charts, uh, the significance of that level. Um, if we, if for whatever reason, the dollar takes off here and, uh, and we don't get a check back into this 89, 90, well then equally what I'm looking for will be the equal legs versus this current low, which again would put us up into that 91, uh, above the 91 level and the wave four objective that I'm looking at. So for now, two areas of interest for me on this chart. One is just below the 90 level and one is above 91. And then obviously uh, we have the 
how that feeds in then the dollar view into the euro dollar. Euro dollar is just taking out uh, the overnight lows. I was looking at, again, similar to the dollar play, looking for a, a correction higher here before we head lower, but it looks like we're uh, potentially rolling over. We want to see a four hour close below the support here at 21.35, then that would actually set up equal legs down into uh, the 120 area, which is ultimately where I'm looking for this correction and in, in, the, um, in the euro and obviously in the dollar index to complete because I'm still, uh, I'm still bullish um, the euro and, and structurally bearish the dollar. Certainly as we hold um, 120 as support, I see the potential for us to test uh, 124 and even up into to 128. Now, if we take out um, the 120 level, then, uh, then certainly we'd be thinking uh, lower back down into the 119 will be the next downside objective. But for now, my view is that uh, this, this move currently is corrective and, uh, and we should hold 120 as support. So again, in terms of what I'd be doing from a trading perspective, I did have short positions running in the euro that, um, that I took profits on. Uh, I'd be watching how we trade as we test into this 120.70, but predicted weekly range support and we've got the prior wave four low here, 120.59. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. Certainly, um, we could expect a, at least a, uh, a three-way corrective move from that low, and potentially we could be looking at the start of, of a new wave higher in terms of the euro. So watching for a four-hour close, if we take out the lows here at 121.30, I think we head down to 120.50, uh, 120.70 as the next area targets the downside. Um, sterling, looking for Sterling to complete a corrective move um, in three wave pattern here to retest the descending trend line resistance, which we took out earlier this week. So I'm looking for a pullback into 135.60 area. Um, potentially we get, we break a bit lower to test the um, ascending trend line here, for third test in and around that 135.30. Um, so 135.60, 135.30, I think is where uh, I'd be looking on the long side again. I'm currently short sterling, uh, sterling dollar, um, just got into that position. So, but I'm, I, see, I currently see this move as corrective and I'm still looking for a test up, a bit, up into that 138 area in terms of, uh, in terms of sterling. Dollar yen, um, again, we have an impulsive move off the lows here. Uh, we took out some key swing points on, uh, on this move and you can clearly see a, uh, a five wave structure here without, this, uh, without me having to, uh, to label it. We've got one, two, three, four, and this is our fifth wave. So what we're anticipating, what we would reasonably expect from, from this move would again be that three wave pullback. And I'd be looking for something down into this 103.40, 103.30 area. Then I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns in terms of the uh, in terms of the dollar yen. Set long position to play for what I think will be a pivotal test of the 104.60 area. You can see we're in this um, trend channel that's pretty clearly defined um, from that 104 uh, from from this 104.50. I would be looking for lower prices. I ultimately think we get a test of 101.20 um, to the downside in terms of the uh, the dollar yen, but for now we're in a correction as obviously correlated with the view in terms of the dollar index. Aussie dollar, uh, looking for a corrective move here in terms of the Aussie. Uh, certainly I think we're going to get a test of the ascending trend line support, uh, 76.85. That will be an area of interest if we get bullish reversal patterns there, then that could um, pretend the end of this correction and we could see uh, the next leg higher. I'm ultimately looking, uh, medium term objective is, up, is, is for a test of the AC level. Uh, so we'll have to see how price responds on a move to test this ascending trend line. If we don't hold this area of support, then again, what I'm looking for is an equal leg uh, to the downside. So if we take out the trend channel support, then, uh, then I'll be looking for us to test 76.25 to the downside, these prior highs here. Uh, prior low. So we're looking for this area to act as support for, uh, for the next leg higher in terms of the Aussie to get a test up into this AC area. Uh, Kiwi, 
short the Kiwi at the moment and um, and still holding that I'm still holding the position uh, I it did look as of last night's price action certainly with this uh, this chart this trend line being held here a couple of four hour reversal patterns haven't seen any real follow through as such and um, and if we can't get any follow through to the upside then I think we can look again I'll be looking for equal legs in terms of the Kiwi to uh, to complete a corrective move so versus the current swing high and swing low we can uh, we could reasonably expect a test of the 70 76 area so if uh, if this move to the downside gathers some um, some momentum here then that's going to be my target for my uh, for my short positions and i'll be watching then for this uh, for this correction to potentially complete here into this support area these prior highs um bullish reversal patterns set long positions because I think ultimately we've got uh, we've got higher to go in terms of the Kiwi. Certainly, I think we can expect a test of the 74 level for uh, potentially seeing a more meaningful correction. So holding uh, holding that, that Kiwi position risk free at the moment uh, from just above the 72 level, 72.20 area is where I'm short. Looney. Uh, so we have a potential corrective pattern here, um, completing on the test here, back into the weekly range support at the 2670 area. We'd certainly um, consider long positions here, but I, what I'd really want to see is a move back through the daily and the weekly pivot at 127 um, to get interested in this on the long side. And again, what I, you know, the, the target for, for this trade, if it sets up, is going to be equal legs versus the current swing low. So we can reasonably expect to move to test 128.70 from this 126, uh, 127 area. And again, once the reversal and trade through those uh, that pivot confluence there to get interested in this one on uh, on the upside. Swissy. Uh, was looking for us to, uh, to, to get an, an equal leg pattern down here to test the support um, into this 8850 area. Now we may hold here at these prior highs. You can see in terms of um, mirroring the, the prior price action, we've got two tests of this uh, 8920 area and, uh, and, and eventually rolled over. What I'd be looking for here is for that to if we can hold if we do hold 8920 for another leg lower for this correction to complete and like I say I'd be very interested to see how the market responds on a test of 8830 potential inverse head and shoulders scenario um, and certainly I'll be looking on uh, on the long side then uh, to get a test of the major descending trend line up towards that 90 level now if we get a close through 8920 then the target becomes equal legs straight away on that close through uh, through the 89.20 for a test of the descending trend line. So again, using that same structure, we have, there we go. So versus this swing low, if we hold 88.50 as support and we take out these prior highs on a closing basis, then we can expect we're on route to make a test of this 90.20 area. And then from there, watching for various reversal patterns and certainly we could reasonably expect a retest of the uh, 89.20 as potential support or uh, this would act as our way for high and we trade lower to retest and ultimately break lows uh, br obviously brought in line with uh, with my dollar view um, of making new uh, of making new lows a fifth wave low um, for the dollar index so we'll see how if we can get the close through this area if we don't get the close then what I'm anticipating is, uh, is an equal leg pullback, which will put us back into this area and watching for bullish reversal patterns set long positions for that 90 objective. Sterling Yen, I had a couple of questions on this last week, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd take a look at the charts. And what I'm looking for here, we've got a potential double top, we've got some nice divergence in terms of the momentum studies. And uh, if we can take out uh, the... 41.50. I actually posted this as a chart of the day um, today. We can get into this on the on the four hour time frame here now. 41. Uh, actually, 41.70. You get a, probably a better uh, better risk reward in terms of the entry here. Got a nice pin bar reversal inside bearish reversal. So if we can take out the daily pivot at eight at 141.80, then I think there is scope certainly to test the ascending trend line 141.20. 
Um, and then we'll see if the pullbacks uh, don't find new highs, then again, we can expect a, an equal leg lower, uh, ultimately looking for a test into this uh, 140.60 area before again, thinking about uh, sterling yen on the long side. Uh, we've got an equality objective above us, as I discussed last week, uh, we could be trading up towards uh, 151 in terms of uh, sterling yen later this year. So um, still, still bullish sterling yen, but certainly we can play the correction here. Euro yen. Now, Euro yen is getting interesting. We're breaking this trend line. We, uh, we've been sitting on this, we're getting a break. What I look for now will be a, a retest of support here. We've got the monthly pivot, 125.90. We've got predicted daily range support to 126. So what I look for is potential support to develop in this area and then get a retest of this trend line from below. And, uh, and then that would set up uh, an, an equality objective to the downside. Ultimately, I'd look for us to retest this 125 area uh, prior, prior range highs here, that to act as support. And that would be an opportunity then to get in on the long side uh, for higher prices in terms of uh, in terms of the euro yen and just basic uh, wave uh, wave formation here you can see we have a one two this will be three four and then we'll have a five up here so uh, for the Elliott wave fans amongst us um, so yeah this this chart is starting to look interesting and certainly want to see how we uh, how we trade when we test this 125.90 area like I say, pullbacks back into this uh, trend line from below. Bearish reversal patterns will be an opportunity to do something on the short side, target 125. Aussie yen. A uh, bunch of these yens have, oh, well, a bunch of these uh, risk correlated FX pairs have some pretty interesting uh, trend patterns developing. And we're going to talk about the indexes shortly. But for the Aussie yen, if we can take out these highs, I'm ultimately, look, ultimately looking for a test up into this 82 area for a potential three wave pullback. Now, if we stall out here and we double top in terms of the Aussie yen, well then what I would be looking for then would be this scenario. So trade up into a double top, then we get a move down into this trend line support watching then for those four hour reversal patterns set long positions targeting uh, this move up into the 82 area. So pay close attention to um, the, this trend line. I think it's, uh, it's an area certainly of interest where we could be looking at setting long positions. And equally in terms of having you know, to, uh, additional trading opportunities, a double top here in terms of the Aussie yen uh, with bearish reversal patterns from the daily range resistance prior highs and this momentum divergence gives us an opportunity to, to get in or, or to or a relatively low, uh, low risk scenario to test the idea of this downside test of the, the trend channel um, or the trend line, sorry, based on uh, the momentum divergence. The only, for me in terms of trading and as part of my trading strategies, the only times I'm interested in really in trading counter trends is where we get really strong divergent patterns because those often precede the, the corrective moves. So watching uh, two opportunities here, prior highs, 80, 80, looking for bearish reversal patterns, short down into the trend line, 79, 60. And then from there, see if we can uh, re-engage on the long side and uh, ultimately looking for a test of the 82 level. Euro Aussie, uh, in a bit, Watching this wedge pattern here in the Euro Aussie as we, uh, as we potentially test down into the daily S3, uh, the third test of the descending wedge, bullish reversal patterns could give us an opportunity um, to trade this counter trend. Again, only interested in counter trend if we have this really nice and clear divergence, which we do have. Um, I think we can see a three wave corrective move, uh, get us back up into this 159 area before ultimately heading lower in terms of the Euro Aussie, you can see we're in a pretty strong downtrend here, and I don't see at this juncture um, any reason to uh, to fight that trend as such. So, I mean, it, this is a counter trend side. If you, in terms of thinking position sizes and risk reward, maybe you want to slightly uh, reduce your position size because the bigger, the better opportunity is realigning with the trend post correction for what I think will be uh, new lows in the Euro Aussie. Euro Sterling. Also got a, uh, a nice wedge developing here. So if we can get a test down into this, uh, this support zone, um, let's change that. 
Oops. So what I've been looking for here is a test of this prior support down to 88.60. Uh, I think we get a three wave corrective move from there. Um, but again, in terms of uh, the trend, I think we're heading lower in terms of the uh, Euro sterling. We've got a daily trend line or a weekly trend line even um, coming in, I think down towards the, uh, the 84 level. Um, so any three wave corrections would be selling opportunities. And certainly if we've got to move back into this 90 area, this pivot zone, uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns, short looking for new lows. Last of the FX fairs here, Sterling Kiwi. Had a question on this last night. Um, so I think three wave corrective move here. Uh, what I've tracked for us is, um, is what I believe is, is going to be a, ultimately a corrective swing here. So what I think we're looking at is, this is the bigger A, B, C objective, so 92.50. And I think we correct versus this current move into a little inverse head and shoulder scenario. I get a pop then up into the 92.50. Certainly from here, I'm gonna be paying attention for those, uh, those bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, looking for new lows, ultimately in terms of the sterling uh, sterling Kiwi. And at this stage, until we, unless we trade through the 93 level, uh, I remain bearish and looking for, uh, for new lows in terms of the sterling Kiwi. All right, let's take a look at some of the indexes. S&P 500 uh, consolidating. Uh, this afternoon we have uh, Biden, President-elect Biden is going to uh, discuss his $2 trillion stimulus package and uh, that's likely to uh, to see the money, well, I mean, we could be on a buy the rumor, sell the fact type setup where the markets cheer the announcement and then uh, and then we get some buyer's remorse and a correction. I remember, I'm certainly bullish, uh, bullish these equity markets. I don't, uh, I don't see us rolling over in the near term, certainly versus uh, the couple of key swing points here, uh, this 3680, we've got trend channel support coming in 3700. So any pop up into this resistance zone, uh, 3860, with bearish reversal patterns, with the divergence that we've got in terms of the momentum, does offer a shorting opportunity. But uh, again, the, the shorting opportunity was counter trend, looking for that three way corrective pattern because I see uh, support sitting at 3,700. And from there, I think we can, uh, we can make new highs. Similar scenario in terms of the Dow, um, looking for a test of, uh, 31,455 uh, 31, um, as, as a selling opportunity. Again, note the divergence we've got here on the momentum studies. So bearish reversal patterns from here. And I think we get a move back in to retest these prior highs at the 30, uh, 30 3400 area. Um, again, just corrected at this stage. I think we're going, uh, I think we'll be heading meaningfully higher um, as long as we hold this support zone. The DAX, looking for a three wave correction in terms of the DAX to hold and test uh, 13,758. From there, I think we can make new highs, looking for uh, 14,400 uh, up to 14,500 uh, before we see a more uh, meaningful correction. You see we're in a nice, um, leading diagonal here, which is, uh, which ultimately should portend a corrective phase. Um, and we'll see if we can get the pullback, watch for bullish reversal patterns here, long positions targeting new highs. Nikkei 225 coming into its resistance zone. And again, note that uh, a really nice bearish divergence we're getting. So looking to fade new highs here for a three wave uh, corrective move to ultimately target but hold this ascending trend line support into the 27,900 area. And again, from there, look for new highs uh, to, up towards uh, 29,600, uh, 29,600 in terms of the Nikkei. So um, from there, then we could see a more meaningful correction as we complete the, uh, the ending diagonal pattern. FTSE. 
similar story, we've got really nice defined trend channel, uh, trend line here. And again, it's looking like a, uh, an ending diagonal pattern, but um, three way, any, any move back in to test this ascending trend line support in the 66, 63 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns, long positions, targeting new highs. And then from that third test of this um, projected ascending trend line resistance, obviously accompanied with the um, bearish momentum divergence will offer an opportunity to play for a more meaningful correction, I think in terms of FTSE and certainly we could get a retest of the yearly pivot back down to 6,500 uh, would be the objective before looking to, uh, to find footing and make, uh, get more constructive. Gold. So again, looking for that three wave corrective move. I ultimately, I'd, I'd, look, I'd like to see gold test back down into this 17, 70 area and from there and certainly get constructed i think then we can uh, we can build a really nice base and see uh, see higher prices in gold um if we can get a three-wave move that terminates get bearish reversal patterns in and around this uh, 1880 area i think that's a shorting opportunity to play for that 1770 test and then we'll see how our prices respond down there in terms of getting uh, getting more constructive on the on the upside silver Similar story to gold, got a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice trading range that we're in. So any uh, any rejection from the just above the twenty six dollar level, I think we then get the move down to test twenty two as support. Um, that third test, if, if the buyers step back in there, then I think that's the base for much uh, much higher prices in terms of silver. Uh, certainly, we're going to look at twenty nine and uh, higher range resistance there. So watch, uh, watch for failure above 26 for short positions, targeting 22, and then see if uh, the buyers step back in here. And then I think we've got a great, uh, great upside target up towards 29. Crude oil, looking for a, a three wave pullback here to ultimately uh, test and hold uh, the 51 level. I'm looking for 55 as uh, to complete this initial uh, cycle, or sorry, this current interim cycle. I think then we can see a pullback, but again, we've got a really nice uh, projected trend line support, which comes in just below $50. It's prior to highs here. And uh, I'd look for that to hold. And again, uh, then I get more constructive in terms of crude, looking for, um, looking for a move up. I, I'd see us potentially test, testing $60 whilst we hold 50 as support. And last but not least, everybody's favorite, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, had the pullback and um, the, my swing strategy for, uh, what I share with the guys at, uh, on the trading floor at FX Career Swap, they have a buy signal uh, last night in terms of Bitcoin. However, if we, uh, if we can't get back through the, uh, the 40,000 level, I see the potential for us to correct again and uh, ultimately test and hold a third test of this trend line here at 3235, uh, 32,350. Uh, watch there for bullish reversal patterns at long positions. My interim target for Bitcoin is, uh, is up here towards uh, 44,500. And then we'll see how the market responds there. If we, if we sail through there, then, uh, then we've got much higher prices to uh, focus on but the interim objective for me is going to be this uh, 44,500 versus uh, this potential corrective pattern now we could have completed this if we if we take out uh, take out the prior highs then immediately my focus will come to this 44,500 area as, uh, as a potential profit taking I back in October um, the first technical review I did of Bitcoin uh, provided a buy signal on the day that uh, that I did the review and uh, you can check back, I think it was October the 8th uh, was the buy signal for Bitcoin. And I've been holding long positions since then, which are uh, proving pretty profitable. OK, so that completes my uh, chart pack for today. Are there any questions? You can either type your questions in the chat box or type a pair if you want me to take a look at a pair um, that I haven't covered or I believe we might, uh, you can also, I can unmute your mic if you want to uh, speak to me directly. Uh, dollar yuan, let's, uh, let's get this up. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So again, I, I, I first uh, I posted um, back in, at the beginning of the year um, a bullish thesis for the dollar dollar yuan. We're we're sitting at that major weekly um, trend line support, and buyers have stepped in. So now what I'd be looking for here is uh, is a test of the six point five level. Ultimately, I think we can test up to six point seven. Um, and for those who uh, who follow my, my, my work, um, there was a big buyer at the back end of last year of, um, of options in and around this 6.5, 6, uh, sorry, 6.7 level. Um, so we'll see if we trade up there. I think they, I think they came, they come into maturity uh, in the first three months of this year. I'll check back and, uh, and I'll give you some, some feedback on that. But uh, yeah, I think we can trade higher in terms of dollar yuan and certainly whilst we hold this uh, weekly trend line support. If you check on the Tickmill blog, you'll see uh, it was the first chart, chart of the day for this year where I talk about uh, dollar yuan uh, constructive versus these lows um, is, my, uh, is my read at the moment. Uh, Sterling Aussie. Uh, um, very well, let's try again. Okay, Sterling Aussie. So, Sterling Aussie. Um, Again, it's it's really it's a similar scenario to um, to the sterling kiwi. What I've been looking for here is whilst we hold the pivot, and I think we could potentially see uh, a move up to test into um, into this trend line resistance. Uh, let's draw that in properly. There we go. Um, So I think we can get a move up to test this trend line resistance, but again, uh, I would be um, I would be bearish versus uh, whilst we hold this trend line resistance. I think ultimately we, we're going to see lower prices in terms of the sterling Aussie. Um, so we'd be looking at uh, you know there's, at this being a correction. However, I mean if we can't hold support here at the 175.53 area, then I think we we're headed back down into the lows. And a, and a retest of the 74.28. Um, so we'll see how price, basically it's gonna be whether or not we can hold, uh, hold this weekly pivot to, to get a test of the descending trend line resistance. Uh, I think pretty profitable is in, <laughs> uh, what's your take on weekly GDP? Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I've, um, sterling dollar, I think we, whilst, whilst we hold, support at 135.40s, I think we can get a test above um, 138. From there, in, broadly in line with, with the view, basically, of a bunch of these um, risk assets, I think then we could see a corrective move, a more sustained correction. But ultimately this year, I mean, whilst we hold this trend line support, currently coming in now, uh, 133.50, let's say, um, my target, my interim target for, um, Sterling is, is a test of 140. And I, I did cover Charlie last week. You'll, um, if you check the recording from last week, it's on the Tickmill blog um, under my profile. Uh, you'll see my, my Sterling dollar view uh, on the weekly um, 140, even 147 uh, possible. Uh, USD Ghana, right, that's one I haven't. Uh, Let's have a look. Yes, D G H S. Right. Let's take a look at this. Uh, let's go daily. I mean, this is a uh, an interesting and very a liquid chart. Let's go to the weekly. Let's do that. 
So, I mean, you can clearly see here that um, there's your trend line support. So there's the trend channel basically for um, for the steady. So again, put so the, the the play here would be pullbacks into um, five point five three eight three uh, to be bought and and ultimately to trade higher. So I mean, you'd only really. Uh, get concerned on the downside uh, on a closing basis versus this trend trend line support, and, uh, and this is a trend line that's been in place since uh, 2012, and you can see every time we've dipped here, uh, there's been significant uh, bids come into the market. So um, yeah, support comes in uh, at the trend channel, and I would just be you can see the price action how it uh, takes it out, pulls back, retest, takes it out, pulls back, retest, takes it out, pulls back, retest. So, yeah, I mean, higher prices versus this trend line support. Does that make sense, Harriet? Interesting to see what the bid asks on that. That's pretty, uh, pretty tight. Okay, so any, um, any other questions? If there aren't any other questions, an N in the chat box is helpful, then I'll know we're all, uh, we're all done and dusted and I can wrap this session up here and we will uh, reconvene same time next week. Thanks very much, hope this helps.